So Van Helmont did a great experiment, but his results were incomplete. You need more than just water and sunlight to grow a plant. The secret ingredient is all around us, and it's up there. Huge. It's hard to believe that a tree like this, like all trees, its wood, its leaves, its everything are made from mostly water and air. That's true, Hazen. A tree's energy comes from photosynthesis, which is a process that requires water, but also carbon dioxide from the air. But first, let's run through the basics of what a plant needs to grow. First, we know that plants need light. Second, without water, plants will die. Third, plants need certain nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen from the soil. Finally, plants need carbon dioxide. Turns out Sue's here studies how plants respond to CO2. But before we look at the carbon dioxide response, let's take a few steps back. What exactly do we already know about the plant-carbon relationship? First, we know that plants need CO2. Check. They take it from the air and they incorporate it in their tissues. Check. And we see evidence that increases in CO2 affect our global climate. So the question really is, how will plants respond when CO2 levels increase in the atmosphere? To answer this, we'll take you to an experiment Suze is doing in the Republic of Panama. Okay. So here I am at a research station in Panama where I do my research and we're studying how plants are affected by elevated CO2. So we found that the best way to determine the effects of increasing CO2 is by using manipulation experiments like this one here. Check it out. This facility is equipped with glass houses and they have fans and air conditioners and humidifiers and all these gadgets to keep the ambient conditions constant while only manipulating CO2. Okay, let me step you through how we're doing one of the small experiments here. First, we collect seeds from the tops of the tree canopy. And then I prepare these pots where the seeds will germinate. Next, we place the plants in these two glass houses, which are exactly alike except for one variable, carbon dioxide. Then we harvest and weigh the biomass of these plants. First, I cut off all the leaves and determine the area of each leaf. Then I dry them to measure their weight without water. Finally, I wash away the soil and weigh the roots, just like Van Helmont did. So when we're done washing roots, this is what we end up with. What we're learning is that plants do grow faster with increased carbon dioxide. But that's only part of the story, since on Earth, increased CO2 is related to other factors, like increasing temperature, which often has adverse effects on plants. To really understand it, you have to see the effects of CO2 in the natural world, such as this site in Minnesota. This is a research plot at Cedar Creek Ecosystem Science Reserve. You see those tall white pipes? They're pumping carbon dioxide over small plots. It's similar to the glass house experiment. It's just out in the open. How cool is that? So as part of a Smithsonian initiative, a network of plots are being set up around the world monitoring tree growth. So they measure the growth rate of trees, and it turns out that the trees are actually showing decreased growth rates. Scientists believe that this could be due to increased temperatures. But it's a hot topic, and a lot of people are studying this now, including me. How might you study this problem? Remember, we encourage you to never stop asking questions and never stop exploring your world. <laughs>